Hello and welcome to the brewery. And today I'm going to be continuing to build the Peltier based, uh, well, fermenter temperature control system. So today we'll be looking at some of the changes I've made to the base system. Uh, we'll be looking at how I built the control box and we'll be getting it ready to try it out on a first brew day. So first, I've got the lid back from the welders uh, Aston Creative Engineering. They did a really good job in adding two new tri-clamp fittings. I've also shortened the legs and used some flexible adhesive to make a sealed tri-clamp fitting onto the vertical post. This is to allow a little bit of movement when it's fitted. I've thoroughly cleaned and polished the rod, including using a buffing wheel and some brushes uh, to remove any contamination on it. I then painted on five layers of dishwasher safe uh, sealant to try and protect the post. And finally I added a load of foam insulation around the lower half and the top of the post to try and reduce the heat loss. And so onto the controller. First I got a 12 volt power supply unit with 30 amps output, a four-way connector to run the Peltiers through, uh, two three-wire connectors for the sensors, these are audio connectors, and an audio style power connector that I've used in other projects. I've got a car USB port replacement cigarette lighter system to take the 12 volt from the power supply and output the 5 volt USB signal required to power the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so what have we got here? Well, first things first, we have 240 volt power coming in here through the inversion of one of the power connectors. They're audio things of some kind, audio equipment power supply connectors. Uh, that I've used on the controller for the rest of the brewery. Uh, that goes into this power supply that takes up down to 12 volts, up to 30 amps. I've used that through what is here. This is the um, it's a USB socket replacement for a um, lighter socket in a car. So that's expecting 12 volts in and giving me USB-C out. USB-C out is going to, to power the Raspberry Pi, which is the latest version of the 4, which has USB-C input. Um, off the Raspberry Pi, we have a little board there that has some resistors on it, and then two one-wire temperature sensors uh, over there. Uh, that one is going to go down the thermal well inside the fermenter. Uh, the other one is going to go somewhere on the cooling heating rod. Um, then we have two relays here and here. They're taking power off the Raspberry Pi plus two control um, wires. Um, they are two pole relays, so they're, they have an open, normally open and a normally closed position. So their normally closed position is connected back to the negative terminals of the 12 volt power supply and then all the open connectors go to the positive one and their common one which is the central one goes to this connector here which will go out to the Peltier board on top of the fermenter. The two other connectors down here are the 12 volts for the fans on top of the um, Peltiers and the wires to the heading out over here we have another couple of little cooling fans here and some holes here to let some air in. I'll probably need to add some more holes to let a bit more air in. So, what have I got left to do? Well, there's a little bit of wiring tidying up to do and fixing things down. Um, I've got to wire up the connector to the cooler and then we're ready for a test. Okay, so we have the completed control box. So, first things first, we have a couple of exhaust fans here, some air intakes and some more at the back, just to get a bit of cooling through it. But to get it going, first thing we need to do is plug in some temperature sensors. So these just go in here. One. And the second one in there. Two. Then we attach 
was it's still just a flat board of Peltier coolers so that we take it the cover off here and we plug in and screw in place and then we take the power supply and we plug that in in place and then we turn the whole thing on that's the booted up and we now have control over the cooler board and finally after putting it all together and doing quite a bit of testing with the water that demonstrated it can easily heat up and down by a degree or more an hour I built a insulating jacket for the fermenter uh, that I'll cover in another video and then it was time to brew a beer. So I decided on a simple recipe to brew first, a basic Centennial and Cascade APA you've seen me brew before, this is the uh, sparge going on at the moment here and once the boil was done it was time to transfer into the fermenter. My plan was to replace the recirculation hose through the chiller uh, with a one that led directly into the fermenter and pump the beer in that way. Unfortunately, I'd failed to think about this properly and didn't realise that by disconnecting that, the hose out of the fermenter and dumping it in the bucket, I was actually starting to siphon beer out of the fermenter. Uh, that is the point when I realised what was going on. Unfortunately, I'd lost maybe a litre of beer at that point. Not great, but not a total disaster. So I carried on putting the uh, hose I built to connect to the fermenter on and simply opening all the valves again and turning the pump back on to transfer the beer into the fermenter. The rest of this process went pretty much exactly as planned. except that I rather overcooled the words and it ended up at 12 degrees C rather than 20. It took the device nearly four and a half hours to pull it up to 20 degrees C from 12, which was a little faster than I was expecting, so not bad there. Uh, then it stabilized the temperature nicely at 20 degrees and held it there through what appears to have been the active cycle of fermentation. On this graph, the red line is the temperature in the thermo well, the yellow is the target, and the blue is measured by the temperature sensor in the ver top of the vertical post. As you can see, the device is holding the temperature of the beer perfectly steady, but the temperature of the device itself is oscillating quite a lot. Uh, this is probably due to the fact that the temperature of the device is controlled by a switch style controller and its target temperature uh, is controlled by the PID. I may have to alter the way this part of the controller works to give a more stable uh, control of the device itself, but for the moment it seems to be working well. So hopefully in a week or two I'll have some nice beer to drink. Now I hope you enjoyed that and it's given you some ideas of things you could try to build. Thanks for watching and I will see you in another video.